Anybody online that serves a Savior that cannot and will not. Listen to me, y'all. He cannot and he will not. Think about your situation, I'm telling you. He cannot and he will not fail. Anybody in the room believe in? Lift his holy name. God bless y'all. Thank you. Father, we thank you. We love you. We honor you in this room and in this moment. We bless who you are. We thank you for what you've done. Thank you for your demonstration. How we can worship our way out of a thing. Father, we thank you for our exodus. Oh, God, I thank you for those who took advantage of what was going on in the atmosphere. And they walked out of a thing. And even when they leave this place, they will see the manifestation of their exodus. I declare it and I decree it. Now in the now, God, I thank you for the testimonies of the exodus and what you've done today. Jesus, we love you more than anything. And we bless your holy name. Will somebody in the room say, glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. You may be seated. Bless y'all. If y'all online, we sorry. You needed to be in the room. I'm trying to tell you. I said, let me jump in this real quick because what they were singing kind of lines up with what God was saying to me this week. And I just wanted to jump in a moment. We had a whole lot of moments in that worship time. Listen, you have to know how not to miss a moment. See, sometimes you can't figure the moment out. You just have to jump in the water, baby. And so there were different moments. And I said, I just wanted to jump in this one. As the baby girl was singing, he won't fail. God began to talk to me this week. I sent a lot of y'all a, a, a video. If I didn't send it to you, it was um, about the kingdom and about praying in your heavenly language. But as I began to talk to God about prayer, he began to show me something. And I just want to break it open to you. And I said, Lord, that's why I just let them go because I feel like my sermon is really short and really simple this morning. I want to talk to you about your belief system. Your belief system. I believe that part of the reason we're not getting what, what God has for us is because if we honest, some of us feel like he have failed. Come on now. And I'm telling you, he hasn't. It might not have turned out the way you thought it was going to turn out, but God did not fail. Does anybody hear me this morning? And so here's what I want to talk to you about. I want you to turn with me real quick to a scripture, Mark 11, 24. It says, it says this. It said, whatsoever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive and ye shall have them. Let me read it again. It said, whatsoever you desire when you pray, you need to believe like you serve a God that will not fail. Y'all hear me? You need to believe like you serve a God that has never failed. And so believe that you receive and ye shall receive them. And so I began to look up the word believe. And believe means this. It means to accept something as true. So what that means is, because if we're honest about it, some of the reason we believe God has failed because when we went to him, we didn't go to him believing. We just went to him kind of hoping and wishing and, you know, thinking that he might ought to probably, you know, just if you see fit, oh, Lord, oh, Father, you know, oh, Lord, if it be thy will. You know what I'm saying? That kind of stuff. But we didn't go to God believing because belief says that I know the thing is true. I believe. I know that the thing is going to happen. And so most of us, if we're honest, and this is why when they say, I serve a God that never fail, you really can't join in the worship because you ain't never really believed God for real for nothing. You ain't never really went to him like he's a God that never failed. You went to him like he was your daddy on earth that failed you a thousand times. But I need some people that say, God, I'm ready to believe you. So this is what he said. So here's what God taught me. He said, some of us, 
no longer even believe that prayer works. This is why we got prayerless Christians and prayerless churches and prayerless people because we believe that prayer does not work. But could it be that prayer is not working because you really don't believe? It ain't that you, you believe that prayer don't work, so prayer really ain't working because you don't believe. And so listen, the Bible says this. I'm going to show you something. Y'all remember last week I should have brought my little boy. Y'all remember I talked about the heart? And the mind. I learned something this week. I heard a woman of God say, when, when you're praying for something, have your mind on that thing. Let me tell you why. 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 Because if I can get your heart and your mind to separate. So what I'm doing is I'm praying for the desire of my heart. I'm praying for my children to come out. But my mind is thinking on what, what they're doing and what I see now. And what y'all know what I'm talking about? So the enemy break up the system that I got to heaven because my mind and my heart are yet divided like I told y'all last week. And so I heard a man say, I learned this. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, see a lot of us don't like to pray in tongues because we don't understand what we're saying. But let me help you. If you go in your mind and if you think, the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. Let me help you. So as I'm thinking about the healing in my body, as I'm thinking, as I'm praying in the Holy Ghost, I'm seeing myself healed. Come on now. I don't know the words I'm saying. Listen, but I'm praying the perfection of the spirit. And I'm saying, no, 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 you know, over my heart that I need. Come on now. Over the thing I need from God. So now you can go and say, I'm praying for my daughter in the Holy Ghost. Help us, Pastor T. And so, and when I'm praying, I'm believing. I'm focusing. I'm thinking, I see it the way I believe it. So God, I thank you that you're bringing my spouse in to the yeah. things of God. I thank you, Lord God. I'm seeing my, come on now, y'all know what I'm talking about? I thank you, Lord God, for the increase. Come on, and you gotta be seeing the increase. Father, now in the name of Jesus, I bless you for the increase, the thing you're bringing from heaven. God, I thank you for flooding this room with souls, those that need to be set free, those that need to be delivered. God, I thank you that they will not leave out the same way that they came. Come on now, do you see them coming? Do you see them? Say, we pray for what our hearts desire, but we won't let our eyes see it. See, what you focused on is your natural eyes, but you need to be able to see the thing you're believing God for. This will change your life. Come on now. You've been praying. Listen, you're like, Lord, I need a new car. Lord, I need, but your mind worry about your credit. You know what I'm talking about? See, see, see. God needs you to see yourself, see the car. See the color, see the interior, see yourself driving, see the keys, see the favor. God told Abraham in Genesis 13, 14, it said the Lord said to Abraham after Lot parted from him, he said, look around from where you are. First thing you got to do is look around from where you are. Because so you'll be praying about where you want to go, but you'll be looking where you are. Ha, come on. He said, Abraham, I need you to look from where you are to the north, to the south. To the, come on, y'all start looking. Look to the north, to the south, to the east, to the west. And God said this. He said, and all the land that you see is what I'm going to give you. And, 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 and your offspring. And then he said this forever so what I want to ask you is the thing you've been begging God for see when you know you're a child when you know you're an heir and a joint heir the first thing you got to stop doing is begging ah you can decree a thing and it shall be established so when you're praying you need to start seeing if it ain't in the east it's cool because I'm going to look over here to the west and, 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 and come on now, you got to use your spiritual eyes. Come on, I'm telling you how to pray. I'm telling you how to get it through. You see yourself? You see yourself? Me, a baby girl got a, a promotion, y'all. Anybody believing for promotion? Well, you did listen. And, and, 
God told him, as far as your eyes can see is what I'm going to give you and your offspring. Not just over the next three years. It says forever. So I'm going to ask you right now, when you're praying, what are you saying? When you're praying, how far are you looking? See, some of y'all only look a mile away. But I need some eagles in the room that say, boy, I can see some stuff. Ah, oh, I see it. It's in my future. It's in my... So see, what will happen is, you'll be saying, Lord, help them to come off of drugs. You'll be praying out of your heart. But your mind be over there, but they stole from so-and-so. And now, Lord, are they okay? So, so my heart wants to believe, but my mind wants me to worry. So I need some people in the room that say, God, I need you to examine my heart and my mind. Align them in prayer. It's why it's important to pray in the Holy Ghost. Because now I ain't praying my will, I'm praying your will. Come on now. Because see, what you don't understand is your will really too small. Come on. God want to do a whole lot more than your little will can even handle. So why the reason you need to pray in the Holy Ghost? Because that thing is perfected in the spirit. And I'm no longer trying to manipulate God to do what I want him to do. I'm praying his perfect will in the name of Jesus. Thy kingdom come. Come on now. I need some people in the room that understand their spiritual authority. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth. And so, I said, Lord, might be the shortest sermon I ever preach. Because all I want your people to do is align their minds and their hearts to be in the same place, in the place of prayer. I want you to begin to see the thing that you're asking God for. He, he can only work with your belief. And a belief is to accept something as true. When I give this to her, listen, she has a right to accept it or not. So when you're asking God, what you're asking God for, baby? She's asking God for her job. So why are you asking? Listen, Lord, I, don't just ask, accept the job. Come on, y'all hear me? You got to say, oh, I ain't just asking you for a job. I'm accepting the job. Come on now. And so listen, Lord, I thank you for what you, oh, man. I thank you for the scholarships. I thank you for the money. You ain't just, don't, don't, don't just start thanking him. Start it. Accepting what he's given. Anybody in the room, come on now, able to accept the thing you asked him for. Yeah. Listen, that's some stuff you've been praying for that he's been trying to get to you, but he can't get you to accept. Yeah. Don't wait till I bring it to accept it. You just go on and walk in the room. Y'all know. They tell the college children, they say, I got a what? An acceptance letter. And so, and so they tell you sometime to come sign, you know, y'all, the signing day and all that stuff. So, so I ain't seen the contract yet, but I've already told everybody that I got it. Because what? The second they told me I could have it, I accepted it in my heart. Listen, how do you believe a college system more than you believe your God? Anybody in the room that say, God, I accept it. And so, he said this. Do you pray? Believing? That means already accepting the thing that you're believing him for as true? Or do you just go to him wishing and hoping? And here's what a wish is. A wish is a feel or a strong expression of a desire or a hope for something that's not easily attainable. Want something, but probably ain't going to happen. Y'all felt that, didn't you? The reason y'all say, mmm, you say, uh, because when I'm praying, that's what I believe is probably ain't going to Am I right about it? You, you're asking God for something that you believe probably ain't going to happen. 
So listen, I need you to do what God said. That's why he can't get nothing to you. He said this. Let me go to this real quick. He said in Matthew 18, it said he called the little children and placed the, ch the children among them. And he said to them, truly, unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven. What did I say? That kingdom come. It's right here on earth. Y'all waiting to die to get it. Listen, he said, unless you come to me like one of these little children. I was walking with Earl the other day. She telling me about her job. I said, girl, you can meet clients right here and you can do this right there. We already walking it out. Why? Because we done already accepted the job. So we walking around like little children with our imagination saying we're going to do this right here and girl, you're going to be able to do that over there. That's how much you got to believe God. But you've been angry with God thinking he's a God that failed because every time you go to him, you go to him like it probably ain't going to happen. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, yeah. Let me tell you, if you ever seen a little child, when they ask for something, it's pretty much theirs. Let me tell you something. I told little Jameson the other day, Wednesday night, Tuesday night, my, my niece in town, I said, Jameson, I said, I'm going to get you and Sky. I'm going to let y'all spend the night at my house. And once, Jameson said, for real? She accepted it. She said, you coming to get us, Pastor T? Let me tell you, she accepted it in such a way, I was almost scared not to call her. Y'all understand what I'm saying? And so, you know what I'm talking about? Because I knew I had to see her on Sunday. Listen to this. You ought to believe God in such a way that he like, let me hurry up and come through for this one. Because if I don't, I got to see him on Monday. And they going to bug me. You got to be like a child. God, where you at? If I ever saw Jameson Sunday, that's why I had to come through on Friday. Now see, I thought you said you was going to come get me in sky. Huh? Y'all need, some of y'all need to go to God. Lord, I thought you said I was the lender and not the, huh? <laughs> you have, but see, you got to know him as father to be able to do that. You hear me? I be, look, let me tell you something. I tell people, I be like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Something ain't right now. I was telling my sister something. We was in DR. I said, I'm kind of offended because I asked God to do this right here. I've been asking him since last year. And I'm kind of trying, I don't understand. Because I'm a spoiled daughter. I expect. Come on now, my daddy to come through. Come on. Don't you want to be that kind of mama or father that when your children ask you for something, they expect it? Come on now. And I'm like, know what's going on so later on what she found out was the thing that I had been praying for come on now had been stuck in the mail for months let me just say that and she said yeah 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 it had been stuck for months God had answered my prayer months ago come on now some of y'all stuff on the way but when they singing about the floodgates you won't sing that went over y'all heads if y'all weren't here last week the floodgates are the last barrier that's right between me and the thing I've been asking God for. And so sometimes you just need to say, God, open the floodgates of heaven. God, I need you to open the floodgates. I decree and declare that the floodgates, do y'all know what a floodgate is? Do y'all know when a floodgate come open, it don't just bring a little drizzle. It bring a whole flood into your life. And so, we need to become like children. Because, see, here's the thing. Children don't believe God has failed. I had a, a sister. She was uh, not believing God one bit to get pregnant. Not ever. And so, but my little nephews, two of them, they was believing God every day. Lord, we thank you for our little brother. We believe you for our little brother. They mama like, man, they lost their man. You know, they do all kind of stuff. And they believe God for their little brother. My sisters and them had had surgeries where they could not have children. So it wasn't even possible, we didn't think, 
But y'all, y'all, those of y'all that know him, y'all see the little brother, don't you? So what was impossible became, what was impossible became possible because two people that came together and believed God, believed God, not wished, not hoped, they believed God, and God did what the doctor said was impossible. And so, I'm done. I told y'all the shortest sermon of my history. But this is what you got to do. Listen to me. I'm going to recap it. When you're praying, you got to see the thing you're praying for. My son, both of them, was a baseball player. One played all the way through high school. And I'm waiting on this scholarship. And he come in. Oh, I don't think I want to do that no more. Y'all don't know what it's like to follow a competitive kid all over the nation in the hot heat, in the cold, in the... But anyway, this ain't what that, that ain't what I was finna say. Your mind and your heart, Pastor T. But somebody sent us a video one time. And they said, the guy would stand at the plate and just keep hitting the ball in his what? Mind. Wasn't no ball. Wasn't no bad, but he just kept seeing himself hit the ball. And so I said, P, you need to sit, because he went into what they call a slump, right? You need to start seeing yourself hitting the ball. And so what the demonstration showed was that when you start seeing yourself, you ain't at the plate yet. The ball ain't came to you yet. It ain't your time to swing yet. Come on now. And so you, and you still might look like you're striking out. But if you keep seeing yourself hitting the ball, all of a sudden, a season that looked like a slump. Come on now. The person that kept seeing themselves hitting the ball. Why? Because before it come, I start believing that I can have it. Come on now. Before I get the home run, I start believing that I can have the home run. So when you asking God for something, what you got to do? You got to start seeing the thing happening. So, whatever you're praying for, whatever you're believing for, don't pray. Like it probably might, probably ain't, maybe will be. You got to be like a child. And say, Father, I trust you. I'm like Pastor T, I'm a spoiled kid. I'm like, hold on now, what's wrong? What's off? Because, you know, my dad loved me like that. I'm a daddy's girl. I, see, I ain't grown like y'all. See, it's grown people that believe he'll fail you. It's grown people that feel like they've been let down. A child. You see, you have to stay a child in God. I'm, I'm helping you. You get real spoiled. When he don't answer, I'm like, hold up. Who off? What's off? What's going on? What? Come on, because cause that ain't how we operate. You can get in a place in God and just believe like a child. and Be like, daddy, this is what I need. Or sometimes you need to just be like, daddy, I don't know what I need. But I sure want to open myself for what you got for me. You know, that I don't know what I need, but I, I'm here to accept whatever you got for me. I, I'll be real transparent with you. Even last night, I said, God, I don't know how to pastor. I don't know how to parent. I don't know how to be a wife. I don't know how to do none of this stuff. But if you will give it to me, I promise you. I lay right here at 1 o'clock in the morning and accept whatever you got for me. Anybody in the room say, God, I'm tired of this disbelief. I just want to believe that the thing I'm trusting you for is already true. Let us stand. So here's what I want us to do in this room. Here's what I want us to do in this room because we're talking about faith. But faith is accepting it as already being true. And the first thing we're going to do is repent for treating God like he's a God that probably ain't going to get it right. And let me tell you something. You got to be like Abraham. 
The Bible said, dude, as far as you can see, I'm going to give it to you. Oh, my God. Man, I would buy me all kind of binoculars and tell us, I ain't lying. I'd be like, hold up, Jesus. Hold on. Let me run to the... <laughs> I'm telling you now, if God told me as far as I could see, oh, man, he had look at him. So some of y'all, if you're honest, say, God, I done kind of stop praying even. Because I don't believe. But somebody about to get their belief back. You feel that thing coming back, girl? You're like, oh, I need to believe it, huh? And so I'm going to ask God to bring your heart and mind together. See, the desire is in my heart, but my mind keep messing with me. You know what I'm saying? And so listen, I'm going to pray. Quit even talking about what you don't believe. Just stop. Stop. <laughs> stop talking about yesterday. Talk about what you see. Do like me and Pearl did. I'm going to meet right here. I'm going to walk right here, take me five minutes. I'm going to do this and that. Start seeing it. Start dreaming it. Start believing it like a child. You know what they say? My house going to be real big. I'm going to live up there with so-and-so. I'm going to do this and that. I'm going to, y'all know how they do. I'm telling you now, go and dream like a child. God, open up our dream realm again. In the name of Jesus. Those people you stop believing God for, start believing God again. Every hand in this room, even if, when you pray in the Holy Spirit, believe it. See it. See it. See yourself. See yourself. See yourself in a way you ain't never seen yourself before. If you're dreaming big now, I need you to go bigger. See further. Come on. See further. See further. We got some visionaries in the house. Your vision ain't big enough, though. I know it's big vision. Dream again. Come on. Go higher. Go. We talking about God here. We talking about God here. We talking about God. Your vision too small. Lift it higher. Lift it higher, Marcus. Lift it, lift it, lift it, lift it, lift it. Higher, higher. Go bigger, bigger. Come on. Your vision, your vision. Higher, higher. More further, Rafael. Forgive us for doubting you, my God. Father, forgive us for doubting you. Lord, we come to you as little children today. Oh, my God. We come to you as your children today. Receiving, expecting, believing for the thing you promised and for the thing we 
at you for in Jesus. Whoa, 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 whoa. Joe, my God. Jesus, mighty name. I need somebody to my God, celebrate. 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 Y'all must be next up nothing. Celebrate. My God. I want you to do real quick. Real quick. I'm going to do something different. We're going to open the altar at the end because we ran long. Give me that. If there's anybody in the room who say, I don't know Jesus Christ, but I need to accept him as my Savior, I want you to raise your hand right now. If there's anybody in the room who say, I know Jesus, but I need a church home and a dope church family, I want you to raise your hand. I see you. Sir. Praise the Lord. I'm going to call you up at the end. Anybody that say I'm having a real problem with my belief system, Pastor T, I heard you, but I'm still struggling. I want you to raise your hand. Okay. All right, so listen. These and anybody else, I want you to stay after, and we're going to minister to you, okay? All right? Y'all good? All right. 